Hey guys, Adrian here, and of course, our monthly global tournament for Season 8 is starting. Well, if I edit this video in time, it should be starting real quick tomorrow. And of course, this means that, once again, the top 100 players in this global tournament will be getting that prized, limited, exclusive global emote. So, to do that, deck selection is half of the battle. Picking a deck that functions well in this meta will ensure that you do much better and have a much higher chance of succeeding, not just in this global tournament, but also in the game in general. So today, I'm gonna be going over the top five decks to run in this current season eight meta to help you guys maximize your rewards and maybe, if you're good enough, get you guys one of those top 100 finishes in that global tournament. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Number one, Goblin Giant Sparky. So Sparky is one of the easiest win conditions to use in the game. And when you're looking for a deck that is consistent, easy to use, and honestly, just a deck that not many people are prepared for, Sparky is always my go-to choice. So with this deck, you're playing mostly like a beatdown deck, you know, meaning that aside from maybe cycling your bats in the back, I won't be making the first move. Then, once your opponent has made the first play, then just kind of react to it. In addition, in certain matchups, make sure you know exactly what cards you have to save. For example, against a Lava Hound matchup, you're saving that Musketeer, and against a Beatdown matchup, you're obviously saving that Sparky for their tank. Aside from that, just defend first and then counter push after a successful defense. You have a lot of ways to do that from the Musketeer, the Mini P.E.K.K.A., Dark Prince, and so on and so forth. Goblin Giant is also surprisingly an underrated counter pushing card. The Goblin Giant provides both tankage and some DPS on defense, which can then be very seamlessly transformed into an effective offense. One more thing to note in this deck is to watch out for spell value. A lot of you units in this deck are quite vulnerable to spells, so try your best to either bait them out or space out your units so that your opponents will not be able to get that spell value. Number two, Splash Yard. Splash Yard is a deck that recently has been doing very well in this meta. And especially with the rise of fireball bait decks such as Royal Hogs, you know, cards in this deck such as Bomb Tower, Baby Dragon, and Tornado absolutely excel at just grinding those units down on a defense. So Graveyard is an interesting type of control deck, meaning that, again, you're going to be playing a lot more reactively. This is because your cards absolutely excel at defending, and if you're able to get an activated King's Tower on defense, you're pretty much set because the goal of this deck is to make positive trades on defense to convert into offensive pushes. Now onto the offense of this deck. For the most part, I'll only go on the offense after a successful defense. And even then, it's very important to not overextend on your graveyard pushes. It's very easy to overcommit on a graveyard offense. And you know, if you just spend like an extra poison or something that was pretty much just wasted, you're now four elixir down with a major spell out of rotation. Speaking of the poison spell, defensive poisons are also super useful, and in this deck is something that I think is often not recognized as a good play, but it actually is. Because keep in mind, the poison actually does more damage than a fireball. Finally, against heavier decks, you're gonna have to shift your gameplay a little bit more, focusing on small pushes, such as a bar barrel graveyard at the bridge when your opponent commits a golem in the back. Stuff like that will make sure that your opponents will not be able to build up that big push they want to try and overwhelm your defenses. Number three, Mega Knight Bridge Bam. Now, this time, instead of the P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Bam deck that I usually always feature, I'm putting a Mega Knight variation of Bridge Bam into this top 5 list. Again, just like Splash Yard, this is mainly due to the fact that a ton of squishy mid-HP units such as Royal Hogs, Barbarians, Musketeer, and so on are running rampant in this meta. Therefore, the Mega Knight offers a solid, all-around, safe option to run in this meta. Now, just like any other control deck, you're again playing rather reactively, but that doesn't stop you from keeping up some pressure throughout the match. Starting off with something small such as a bandit or a bar barrel at the bridge are perfectly acceptable plays, but other than that, I'll usually wait for my opponents to make the first move. One important note, however, is to often hold back on that Mega Knight. It's a very expensive, heavy, 7 elixir card, so if you play that card prematurely, your opponents might be able to take advantage of the fact that your biggest splash card is out of cycle and rush opposite lane, leaving you with not much elixir to defend. 
Instead, I prefer to play, you know, my E-Wiz, my Bandit, and my Inferno Dragon on defense first. And if your opponent really is going to go all in, then go ahead and whip out that Mega Knight. Ram Rider is also another underrated card on defense because she can very effectively defend on defense by slowing a ton of units down and then rush to offense and demand a response or else she'll connect to the tower dealing a ton of damage. Again, just like Splash Yard, Poison is a spell that you'll be using on offense and on defense as well, noting how effective it can be in both situations. Number four. Minor Wall Breakers Cycle. Now this deck is probably the hardest of the five decks I'm sharing today to play, but that doesn't mean it's going to be any less effective. Now this deck is a chip cycle deck, meaning that you're trying to keep a moderate to high amount of pressure on your opponents, so they simply cannot build up a big push on you. Starting off the match with, you know, anything from a miner to the tower, splitting wall breakers, or cycling skeletons are all acceptable plays, and oftentimes I'll actually make the first play with this deck. Other than that, the magic archer, valkyrie, and bomb tower form an almost impenetrable defense. Your magic archer snipes anything away from a distance to avoid spell value, the valkyrie does heavy duty tanking for your splashers to take out units on defense, and the nato allows you a lot of flexibility when it comes to pulling units all over the map. Again, I want to emphasize that you want to keep the pressure up, but also do not overextend. This is a chip deck after all, so you're not pouring all of your elixir into a single push. Instead, just keep on sending those miners and wall breakers onto the tower, try and get some poison value on the tower with some other units, and just try and connect that magic archer to the tower using some very careful placement. All in all, it's a chip deck, so just keep chipping away, you know, a few hundred HP each time until eventually your opponent's tower goes down. Number five. Golem Beatdown. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, Golem Beatdown is one of the easier decks to play on this list, relying on building a massive push that overwhelms your opponent's defenses. So, this variation of Golem in particular is actually on the cheaper side of Golem Beatdown decks, meaning that, although I would still definitely not make the first move, I can also Golem in the back without worrying about not having too much elixir to defend, as, you know, the Bomber, the Guards, the Mega Minion are all very cheap and effective three elixir defenders. So, overall, I'm still gonna be passive in single elixir, you know, mainly defending, positive traits on defense, and taking some tower damage to convert into an elixir advantage, but then eventually, you're gonna want to build up a push. So, when you get to this point, I usually prefer playing a Night Witch in the back first with a Golem in front later, so that the Night Witch can begin to spawn her bats as soon as humanly possible. But if it's not in cycle, then just doing a classic Golem in the back and support behind works just fine as well. Other than that, also avoid giving your opponents much spell value. This is one of the biggest issues with beatdown decks because a lot of the troops can be very easily destroyed when clumped together. Therefore, I like to either wait until my opponent uses one of their big spells and then go all in, or just to be extra, extra cautious. Because again, the last thing you wanna do is to throw away an elixir advantage and throw away your entire push as a whole. Aside from that, if you were to take one thing from this video about this deck, it is to play on the slow rolling side. So there we go, the top five decks I would run in the upcoming global tournament. Now, of course, there are a ton of other great meta decks that work in this season eight meta. So I'll go ahead, flash a few of them on the screen right now. You can see we've got a few Lava Hound control decks, Balloon Cycle, Hog Cycle, Fireball Bait, Expo, Elixir, Golem, Mortar, you name it, there's probably a viable deck in this meta that uses that card. But nevertheless, the five decks that I showcase in this video are, in my opinion, some of the quickest to pick up and easiest to play. Of course, the deck links are all in the description, so if you'd like to try one of these decks out or make a few adjustments on your own, be sure to go down there and give it a shot. This month's meta is actually pretty enjoyable because a lot of different decks are completely viable, but these five, I believe, will be some of the easiest and most effective to maximize your winnings. Let me know your best decks in the comment section below, but unfortunately, guys, that's all I've got time for in today's episode. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legend Array, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time.